Welcome to Netlytics tutorial on Network Analysis Part 2. In this tutorial, you will learn about the visual components of social network analysis, the differences between name and chain networks, and we will walk through Netlytics network analysis features used to discover and understand the social aspects of your datasets. Netlytics uses the social network analysis model to visualize how individuals interact with one another through online conversations. Where the text analysis focused on the content of conversations, network analysis focuses on the relationships and interactions happening within a network. The social network can be used in a variety of ways, such as detecting the presence of an online community, measuring the strength of that community, identifying prominent actors or influential members, as well as peripheral participants, so people who are susceptible to being influenced, identifying and analyzing members' perceptions of products and services, and finding popular resources. There are two components to visualizing a network, nodes and edges. Nodes represent individuals, organizations, or other entities, and these are the dots in our diagram. Edges, which are the lines between the nodes, illustrate an interactive connection, so for example a conversation. There are two types of social networks that Netlytic can visualize, name networks and chain networks. Name networks are concerned with who mentions whom. This approach identifies personal names mentioned in the body of each message and builds a network which connects the sender to everyone mentioned in his or her message. A chain network is built based on information about direct interactions among online participants, such as direct replies. When building this network visualization, Netlytic will look for names in the to or from fields, replies on Facebook or Instagram, or in the case of a Twitter dataset, when a message begins with a username. Such information is not always available for all types of datasets, but if available, it will be stored in the data fields such as in reply to or to on the CSV. For this tutorial, we will be building a name network to explore the network analysis features. The analysis for chain networks follows the same steps. To visualize a network, first analyze the messages, then click the visualize button. For our example, we will be working with both an Instagram and Twitter dataset. The left panel on the next screen displays the network features offered by Netlytic. Let's walk through them now. The search bar up at the top will allow you to search for specific nodes or a group of nodes by separating their names by commas. This can be used to quickly identify individuals of interest in the network. Alternatively, you can view any participant within the network by clicking on a node. Once selected, the left-hand panel will display all of the other users connected to that node. Clicking on any of these other usernames will display the connection and message content. The visibility buttons give you the option to select or deselect node labels and edges. These are automatically selected by Netlytic as default. These options assist with the visibility of the network and its components. You might deselect node labels in order to export an image of the network without extra noise of text, for example, or deselect edges in order to get a clearer view of the nodes, particularly if they were located near the center of a dense network and partially obstructed by numerous edges. A network's layout is an important feature because it enables the users to identify patterns in the network, such as clusters of individuals, which, once examined, can then inform the network analysis. For example, who are the primary individuals that make up a given cluster? What groups them together? Or alternatively, what could be the reason for other individuals' exclusion from the cluster? Netlytic offers three types of layouts. The first is great for networks with less than a thousand nodes. The second, or the DRL, distributed recursive layout, is very effective for visualizing large networks. Here, the long edges are cut to highlight clusters. The LGL, or the Large Graph Layout, is also very effective for visualizing networks, but this layout will only display the largest connected component of the network. The purpose of the various layouts is to build a network with the least amount of crossovers between ties.
When adjusting the view of your network, you have the option to change node size based on three different calculations, which visually represents different types of interactions between individuals in a network. The in-degree measure looks at messages received by a node. In-degree is significant because it demonstrates the prominence or popularity of an individual since they are the target of communication or interest. Nodes with a higher centrality based on in-degree would become larger. First, let's make sure our node size is selected to in-degree. I'm also going to remove the other cluster, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, to see the nodes more clearly. Here we can see that our nodes vary in size. Two nodes are larger in comparison to all the others. We can identify three of them as having a high in-degree measure in comparison to the rest. Repost app, Gallery Art Frame, and Ms. Julie Black. Along the left-hand side, we see five messages have been directed to Ms. Julie Black, while only one message has been sent by the user to another node. By contrast, the out-degree measure looks at messages sent by a network participant. Let's select out-degree from our option list. You'll notice a slight change in the network nodes as their centrality measures are recalculated. The out-degree measure is determined by the number of ties directed or sent from a node to others. Out-degree is significant because it can help to identify influential individuals in the network or individuals that are particularly active communicators. This could be used to compare how active various individuals are. For instance, if you compared three different Twitter news handles and see which one ranks higher in terms of their output. In this network, the node khi underscore dance from cluster 2 increases in size. We also see that gallery art frame remains an active node within the network, which is also indicated by its out degree measure of 48. The last measure we can look at is total degree, which combines the in degree and out degree counts. This measure is useful for determining the key players in the network at a glance and can indicate whether these participants are individuals with a high prominence or who are highly vocal within their network. When we select the total degree measure, we notice a slight change in node size among all participants. However, we still see that Gallery Art Frame is a prominent node within this network. The color feature in Atlytic allows users to customize the network visualizations. Black and white tends to be a popular choice as it creates contrast between the background and the network nodes and edges. Along the left-hand panel, you have the option to select or deselect various clusters, which are automatically identified by Netlytic through a community detection algorithm. This feature is especially useful to examine a particular cluster more closely when clusters are densely overlapped. For instance, with this Twitter dataset, there is a dense overlap of clusters, which can seem overwhelming. By making only one or two clusters visible at a time, it becomes easier to explore and analyze each grouping of nodes. You can zoom into the clusters in a variety of ways. If you are using a touch screen, you can simply pinch to zoom in or out of the network clusters. If you're using a laptop, touchpad, or mouse, simply scroll up or down to zoom into the network. The Save Image button allows you to save an image of the network. You can save up to three images in the left panel, which will be saved until deleted, even after reopening the network. To save more than three images, you will need to first click the Save button, and then download the image to your computer. Simply click on the arrow button located on the image. A new screen will appear. Here you can right click on the image and select Save As. Once the image has been saved to your computer, you can delete it in the network panel to make room for additional images. This feature can be quite valuable since the network visualization doesn't allow users to examine the network with respect to time lapse. So capturing multiple images at different points of collection can be helpful to illustrate how the network has grown and changed over time. The final feature we will look at helps users to create annotations on the network visualization. 
Along the bottom right, users can click on the yellow plus sign to add sticky notes, which can be dragged anywhere on the visualization. Once notes are added to the network, a new box appears in the bottom right corner. If you add notes at various zoom levels of the network, for example 0%, 25%, 50%, etc., new boxes will be added to allow for a faster navigation between notes as displayed below. Thanks for watching. For more information on how to use Netlytic, please visit our YouTube channel. Documentation can also be found at our website at netlytic.org.